Hello, sweet friends, and welcome to Kinda Shabby. My name is Becky, and I am so glad you stopped by. Today, we're going to be using air dry clay to create some sweet and simple ornaments for Christmas. I'll be using doilies and lace to make impressions in the clay, and then I'll use my cookie cutters to cut out the shapes. You guys are also very curious about how my move to Tennessee is going, so I'll have a life update for you at the end of the video. Well, I have lots of crafty cuteness in store for you today, so let's get these projects started. Now before I begin rolling out my clay, to ensure that it is a uniform thickness, I took three giant craft sticks and some blue painter's tape and wrapped them together. Then I taped them to either side of my craft mat to ensure that it is going to be a uniform thickness of my clay. Then I grab a big bunch of the clay from my bag and begin working it in my hands just to warm it up and make it a little more pliable. Then I'm going to press it in my palms a little bit just to kind of flatten that out, place it on my surface, and start using my rolling pin. And now that everything is nice and smooth, I'm taking this doily that I picked up from a thrift store and I'm going to lay it into my clay. And I'm not going all the way to the edge. I'm leaving a little bit of space here because I just want this scalloped edge in my design. Now I'm going to take my rolling pin again and just roll that into the clay to make a good impression. It's hard to see on camera, but your doily almost is even with the surface of the clay and then you just want to lift that up. And it leaves such a beautiful impression. Now I've done something similar where I made jewelry dishes out of the clay like this using the doily for the impression and it just turned out beautiful. And now I'm going to get the cookie cutters that I want to use. This is actually a three inch biscuit cutter and I think my little angel will look pretty too. For the angel, I want this scalloped edge to show up right along here, so I'm just going to hover it over and place it down and cut it out. I think that's going to be beautiful. I'm going to take my 3 inch biscuit cutter and I'm going to place it over the medallion and cut that out. So there is our angel and our little medallion, and I'm going to roll that out and do it again. This time I just want just this little scalloped edge right here. Let's remove that. Now I'm going to use my little clickable stamp set here and impress the word joy into the clay as well. Isn't that pretty? And it's going to look so nice when everything starts to dry. And while my clay is still wet, I'm taking the blunt end of a bamboo skewer and I'm going to make my hole for my hanger. Just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other two here as well. So I've placed these on some wax paper and I'm going to set these aside to dry. We're going to go ahead and get started with our terracotta colored clay. Again, we're going to work it and soften it in our hands. And this stuff will turn your hands orange. If you don't like that, you could wear gloves or you can stick your hands inside of a little sandwich bag, but it doesn't bother me. So I'm just going to go just like this. I don't want the clay to stain my rolling pin. So I am going to cover it with wax paper and just roll it out like this. I don't want to stain my doily with the terracotta clay, so I've got this beautiful piece of silverware that I'm going to be stamping and making the impression into the clay. And I'm just going to lay it in and press down, and I'm placing it close together when I put it in there just to make my impressions. So that is with the spoon. Isn't that cute? And to give a cleaner edge, I'm going to lay my sandwich bag down center up my Christmas tree how I like it, and press down. And when I try to remove the clay from around the image, ugh, it is making a mess. Pull this up with my ruler, 
because it's just sticking even to my mat. Okay, so that looks cute. And using my clickable stamps again, I'm going to stamp the word Noel into my Christmas tree. That is really, really cute. And again, I'm going to take my skewer and make my hole in the top here for the hanger. And to prevent your ornaments from having a lot of cracking, you want to let them dry for a couple of hours one way, and then you're going to turn them over and let them dry for a couple of hours on the other side. You want them to dry slowly. And for this one, I'm just going to use my gingerbread cutter. I'm actually not going to do any impressions on this, but it's actually going to be really cute when we decorate it. I thought I had my camera on when I used this cut glass here to make some ornaments, and I did not. But I used the bottom here and the side of the edge here when I rolled out and pressed these. Isn't that cute? And then this is the bottom impression. And then I used my two inch biscuit cutter to cut those out. And now I'm going to use some lace and see if that is going to make a good impression on here as well. Apply firm but gentle pressure. Barely, barely visible. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. So this was a fun experiment, just using all of these various items to imprint into our clay. I thought that turned out really cute. So my ornaments have been drying for a couple of days and now I'm going to apply some paint. And you absolutely could leave them just as they are. They're so pretty. And I'll be using the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white. And for the terracotta ornaments, I'm actually going to be putting white wax on the top of them to bring out the details in the clay. Also, I let my ornaments dry flat first for a couple of hours like this, turn it over, let it dry a couple of hours on that side. Then I put them all on something where I can get air all around the ornaments so that they will dry evenly. And that also helps to prevent cracking. And I will be painting both sides, but I'll paint the back off camera just to save time in our video. It's kind of hard to pick up the color difference on camera, but this one is a much more white, and this appears almost a little gray when compared to that white paint. So I'm going to go ahead and get paint on all of our white ornaments, and then we'll come back and wax our terracotta. Because our clay is extremely porous, if I went in with that white wax, it would just grab on to that surface and really kind of make a mess of it. So I'm going to start with clear wax. I have so many different brands of waxes. Whatever you want to use is going to be perfectly fine for this project. So I'm going to put a little bit on my brush, dab off the excess. And then I'm going to start gently in a circular motion, rubbing it over my surface. And you can see it's starting to brighten up the color. And that way you can tell where you have applied it and where you need to add more. And I'll be doing that to both of my terracotta ornaments here. And now that I have wax on both of my ornaments, I'm coming back with a paper towel and I'm just going to blot off the excess clear wax. Look at all that color coming off. That is why you definitely don't want to dip your brush into your wax. And if you didn't want to use terracotta clay, you most certainly could use paint to achieve a similar look. All right, I'm going to go wash this stuff out so it doesn't dry in my brush, and then we'll come back and get our white wax applied. So I've dipped out a little bit of my white wax and placed it over here. Again, I do not want to cross contaminate my wax with any color from my terracotta. And I let my clear wax set up for about 30 minutes. And now I'm going to go in with my white wax, really getting into all of those little crevices. And now I'm going to take another clean paper towel. And when I wipe back the surface, you can see that it leaves the wax in those depressed areas. 
and just gives a nice soft finish to the rest of the flat surfaces. I just love using waxes like this. Isn't that pretty? I love how that turned out. Now for my little gingerbread man, we didn't do any impressions, but he does have striations in the clay. So I'm just gonna rub over my little gingerbread man in the same way and wipe that back. And we'll come back and get some little pom-poms and whatnot glued onto him to make him look really cute. So I'm gonna let my wax finish drying. We're gonna let these finish drying and then we'll come back and get some hangers in all of our beautiful ornaments. And now I have an assortment of ribbons and laces and different foliage here. And we're just gonna go ahead and get some fun things onto our ornaments. And for this one, I think this one might be my favorite. I'm gonna start with just a little bit of my rose gold finishing wax. I saw this in the store when I was at Hobby Lobby and I thought, ooh, I wanna try this. So I'm only gonna put a little bit on my finger and I'm just gonna go around the outside edge here. So that is the rose gold on that one. Oh, so, so pretty. I have a copper paint pen and I think it'll look nice on my terracotta ornament. And so I'm gonna just take this and go around the outside edges of my little Christmas tree here. That is really, really pretty on that terracotta. I like that a lot. I've got a gold paint marker and I think I'm gonna to try to go into this little depression around here with that marker. Let's just see what that looks like. I like that. That's really pretty. I'm going to try the copper on this one. See what it looks like on the white. That's really pretty. I'm going to use the gold paint pen on the star. That's not showing up, so we'll just do the copper. That's much better. I didn't outline my little gingerbread man, but I think these are going to be cute. They look like little buttons on the front here. I think the little rickrack on the legs looks cute too. So I'm going to get that glued down. That rickrack is just adorable. That's cute too. I'm going to use a Sharpie and attempt to put a face on him. There's our little gingerbread man. This twine will look cute with him. I like a little bit of this greenery here. I like that. I think that'll be cute on that too. I put some blue painter's tape on the end of the ribbon to get it through my hole here. I just love that color ribbon. I actually think I'm just gonna leave it just like that. It's really, really pretty. I'm gonna use some lace as the hanger for this one. I think just a little bit right there will be really pretty. And that looks so nice with the rose gold metallic wax on the side too. So pretty. I did some fun iridescent gold ribbon on these two. And these would also look great as gift tags too. Just some plain white ribbon on that one. I'm gonna take a piece of lace and glue it here. Maybe a cute little button. I think that's really cute. And I decided just to do some lace on the angel. I didn't want to cover any of that design up. I really liked our ornaments here. And now let me give you a closer look so you can see how cute everything turned out.
Well, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and that you plan on making some of these sweet little beautiful ornaments for yourself. And now let me give you an update on our move to Tennessee. We have actually decided to take our home off the market because mortgage rates just keep climbing. People are used to a 2.5% to 4% mortgage rate, and where they are now at over 7%, people just aren't buying. So we have decided we're going to just wait until they return to normal and try it all again. We are a little disappointed because we did want to be in Tennessee with our daughter, and I also wanted to be with my dad and my stepmom and all of my aunts and uncles and cousins there too. But you know what? Our life in Florida is pretty perfect as well. My sister lives about 45 minutes away. All of Mr. Shabby's family lives about a 30 to 45 minute drive as well. So either way, it is a win for us. I do thank you all so much for all of your sweet comments and the thoughts and prayers that you have sent our way. For those of you who are new here, I ask that you subscribe for more kinda shabby but always chic, crafty inspirations. And for those of you who have been with me from the beginning, thank you so much. I have missed you and I'm so glad to be crafting with you again. And so my sweet precious friends, until next time, be blessed.